Hey everybody, happy Tuesday from the tropics. Uh, just wanted to come in here today as uh, I get really amped up um, after doing really, really great and personal uh, retreats here in Bali with some of my clients that fly all the way from all over the world to come spend a week with me, sometimes just a whole day with me. Um, and every time I sort of incubate with my clients uh, in you know, my beautiful home base of Bali at this point in my life, uh, hopefully other places in due time where I can hold these retreats as well. But every time I sort of emerge from um, that you know, intimate and personal work that we do together for a whole week, um, I tend to get buzzing with tons of ideas to share. And one of them uh, felt uh, really, really valuable to share today, uh, partly because I've been getting tons of questions about this topic. And um, I think it's an important one uh, to actually be talking about today. Um, uh, for people who are listening who feel that they're introverts or feel that they have introvert qualities and potentially thinking that uh, it may not be um, easy, right, to do something like launch a business or share a big message about your work or really just get out there uh, and impact people with big ideas that you have. Uh, so in the last week, uh, I've been spending time with a really lovely client of mine named Hannah. You can see her oh, this way. <laughs> on the screen. Uh, we had a, an amazing time uh, spending a few days in Bali, uh, really um, working together. And, I, you know, it's my favorite thing to do whenever I get to, do, to work with clients in this sort of in-person and um, intimate and personal event, because we get so much done in a small amount of time. Uh, and I've been really, really grateful to work with Hannah, um, who came all the way from Indiana to see me. Uh, and she is actually a holistic and wellness coach that specializes in gut health uh, for the busy everyday woman. And one of the big things we ended up working on together was actually um, creating and designing her signature offer in her coaching business, which is so good for a confidence to go out there and sell what she does, but in a structured way, in, a, in, in with boundaries of what she really wants to be working on and not being just any coach to anyone. That was the, the first win we experienced together. And then the second big win, uh, and this is something that she sort of revealed to me at the end of our work together, is that she was relieved to find out that as a, a, a very, very um, introverted person, that she didn't have to design a business like everybody else. She didn't have to market like everybody else, and she didn't have to, to be someone different to feel listened to. And I asked Hannah a few questions about what she meant by that. And I thought this is such a powerful topic for me to share today because you know what? I don't know if you guys know this, but 80% of my clients at Screw the Cubicle, whether it's people in my academy or private clients or any retreat people that come see me in Bali every year, is 80% introvert people. And I have a little bit of a theory about why I keep attracting introverts. I, I may not particularly be the sort of traditional introvert. I'm, I'm what I would categorize more of an ambivert. Um, I can be intro, uh, introverted when it's time to do things like my work. That's why I love one-on-one. -on -one. I love small groups. I sort of, you know, um, prefer friendships and clients that are in small, um, little, little, you know, intimate moments rather than big arenas or sort of big, um, you know, numbers of people. I lose track of people very easily and I love being able to work with sort of people um, when they are intimate and personal with me. Now, Hannah is kind of that person as well. And I also find that I guess whenever I start talking a lot um, about how to um, design a business that's based on your strengths, that really, really attracts people. Um, and I think a lot of introverts have a hard time sort of um, honoring some of their strengths and honoring some of what I call their, you know, um, the, the quiet influencer, right? The quiet power business owner that actually is going to lead with very, very different ways of how they connect with people, how they build credibility in their business, um, and how they choose particular decisions in their business in things like marketing, how they offer, right? What they offer in their businesses and how they deliver right? Their service is also really important to an, to an introvert. Um, and then what types of clients really work well with introverts, right? And that's something you want to consider, especially if you are someone that's an introvert starting a business or growing a business as well. 
So a couple of things that I wanted to share was sort of the big aha moments between uh, the work that I had with Hannah. Uh, and then also really some of the most common uh, ways to really show up as an introvert based on the work that I've been doing so far with 80% of my clients being introverts. Um, and the first thing is, I kind of mentioned this already, the first thing for introverts to really acknowledge is that you are never going to be someone that stands on top of a rooftop and shouts your ideas into the world. Uh, you're also very likely not going to be the type of influencer in your business um, that is going to be kind of that, you know, Marie Forleo or Oprah or, you know, that sort of kind of um, big voice that needs to be on a stage potentially all the time or that a lot of your marketing needs to be this sort of public forum right, of um, instinctive sort of ideas like a live stream uh, or a place where you have to give answers really quickly. What I really find with introverts, the best um, ways for them to spread their ideas and share their ideas, introverts are really considerate people. They like to like, you know, listen to a question or they love to take time to analyze a problem and then they go away right? And figure out how they want to present that point. They figure out what their thoughts are, their insights are, what their ideas really mean before they actually end up producing the article, the blog, the live stream, the video interview, whatever it is at the end result of the format, doesn't matter. But the process of how they market, the process of how they produce content, the process of how they um, get out there, right, live and in person or virtually like this, right, to share ideas, they need almost a bit of a pause that sort of happens there. And so my advice to introverts is embrace that part of yourself. If that feels like something, like if you're listening today, uh, if that sounds like you, say a yes on the comments, uh, but give yourself permission to have that pause. You don't need to actually answer questions and things on the fly. You know, I know with Hannah, for example, um, when she looks at, you know, YouTube videos and um, videos that she admires online, she feels that she has to be that person to produce videos. But actually, you know, she's someone that actually likes to think about uh, planning out her videos in a really concise and summarized way instead of that sort of impromptu way of marketing, right? And for me, I'm the opposite. I'm someone that thinks on my feet really well. Um, I like questions that are on the fly. I don't like over preparing for things that stresses me out. And that's my way. That's why I do these live streams a lot more than I do things like blog articles because that takes me forever. Uh, but for introverts, I find that the, the types of ways that they express themselves are, like I said, this sort of taking that pause, being very considered in how they answer things, uh, and very likely produce very long form kind of content or information, right? Or resources and materials that are less than just little two, three minute videos, right? So one of the things that we talked about uh, with Hannah that I found she found really important, right? So the first thing is acknowledging you have these types of qualities and be okay with them. You don't need to be an extrovert to uh, put great work out there in the world. And then the second thing was an aha moment for Hannah and I when we start working on her introverts version of a marketing plan is that she can actually just really focus on one thing. So if you remember, I just said, you know, introverts are quite focused and they're considered and they love sort of digging deep and diving into things Im immersively. Um, if they are marketing or building a project that has sort of like so many things to do and they have so many ways to show up or so many offers to sell, right, or so many ideas to ship out, this is when things start to get a little hairy. I think everyone feels overwhelmed in all sorts of different ways, but especially for introverts, having uh, more than one thing sometimes to master and focus on uh, is may not be the way to go. So one of the things that sort of felt re relieving for Hannah when we talked about what to focus on when she went home after the retreat in Bali uh, was literally one goal at a time, one thing at a time. Uh, and I think that also goes for things like, you know, marketing your business, like picking one platform to show up in, picking one platform that makes sense for your personality, that makes sense for the way you deliver information, that allows you that permission to do it in the longer format if you wish for that to be the reality. Don't choose, you know, platforms that is like bam, 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 that you have to show up, you know, that is very impromptu and not comfortable for the types of characteristics you've got and the quality of a person that you are, right? Um, so I know with introverts, a lot of times, especially they're great writers, introverts are excellent writers, they get to really take their time to produce long form content. Things like, 
just actually mastering blogging, putting your blog up or being on medium.com and just doing that consistently every week, every month without, you know, any distractions and not focusing on Instagram or anything else that you think you have to do have really gotten more results for my clients uh, than, than whatever they used to do before, which is like five, 10 different things. So even more important, second point, introverts need to choose a North Star project, choose a North Star um, goal for the month, or even a North Star marketing strategy where they really just master one thing really, really well. And that's always felt amazing for introverts to market themselves. And then lastly is start to, as an introvert, follow other introverts that do business and create great work and big ideas well. Right. Those are the people you should be learning from because they're more your style. And whenever they have a strategy or a content plan or however way they brand their 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 or position their brand, um, these are excellent people to follow and emulate because they're so much more in alignment with the values that you have and the qualities you are as an introverted person. I know it's always very, very tempting to follow all sorts of people out there that represent success and represents a version of what good business is. And everybody, of course, has their own version of success. But it's also important to have those boundaries of the types of influencers and brand idols that you really do follow that actually represent you, right? Represent a way that you want to show up for your business. And that makes it a whole lot easier for you to be inspired well in, in the right way and for you to feel good, right? Admiring people that are just like you and can follow suit in the way that they have ran a great business without being who they're not, right? And really honoring who they are as a quiet power introvert that can still very much share big ideas into the world. So if you are an introvert who is thinking about launching a business or you're an introvert, that's just like thinking that you've been held back a little bit by these self-imposed pressures of being someone you're not to be able to do big things in the world. I would love to hear from you. Um, tell me a bit more about yourself as an introvert. What any obstacles that you may have about producing big ideas or shipping ideas into the world. And I would love to help you move forward. And if any of this, of course, resonated with you, would love for you to tell me that as well. Um, and maybe share with an introvert uh, that might be waiting for permission to do something and hopefully this public service announcement for the day inspires them uh, to back you know who they are and put their great work out there into the world okay thanks for joining me have a good rest of your day bye